Okay, in problem 64, you learn that you can find the intercepts of a parabola um, from a rule that you can sketch the graph without a table. So what is true about the value of y for all x-intercepts? What is true about the value of x for all y-intercepts? So for x-intercepts, y equals 0, y-intercepts, x equals 0. Hopefully you remember that. We've been working on that kind of stuff all year. If x equals 0 at the y-intercept, find the y-intercept of y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Well, if x equals 0, you're going to plug that in. 2 times 0 squared is 0. 5 times 0 is 0 minus 12. So y would equal negative 12. Uh, y-intercept is the easiest point to find on parabolas in, as far as the equation goes. Since the x-intercept occurs when y equals 0, write the equation that would you would need to solve and find the x-intercept for the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. It would be 0 right here. So you'd have 0 equals that. So then now, um, I'm going to explain the whole thing to you and then kind of break it up into sections. Um, so you have your equation, 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Um, and if you, you, right now you don't know how to solve it, but you do know how to factor. And so if you factor this, so first you're going to factor and solve, um, or you can use the quadratic formula. Um, we're going to talk about that after our chapter eight test, but only for a day because I'm running out of time. Um, so 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals 0. So first, do they have a common factor, 2, 5, and 12? Nope. So you'll bring down your 2x squared, your minus 12 here. So you're going to be looking for two things that multiply to be a negative 24x squared. That will add to be 5x. So over here, I listed my factors. Since this one's negative, I know one needs to be positive and one needs to be negative. So when I look at these, I'll have to subtract. So it has to be 3 and 8. And then since I'm subtracting, it will get the biggest um, sign. Um, it'll get the same sign as the biggest one. So if this is going to be positive 8x, this is 5x. Or since this is positive, the big one has to be the same. Sorry, I twisted that around. 8x, negative 3x, and then you bring them apart. So deciding where your 2x squared, this one, you can't put the 2 down here because you wouldn't be able to multiply by a whole number to get 3. So your 2x has to go here. 2x times 4 would give you 8x. And then here, bringing your x times negative 3 gives you the negative 3x. And then you multiply to make sure negative 3 times 4 is a negative 12. So you get 2x minus 3, x plus 4, equals 0. Now, here's the new thought process. If this right here equals 0, so it'd be 0 times x plus 4, it wouldn't matter what was inside here. 0 times anything would be 0. Or the same thing here. If this one were 0, it wouldn't matter what this one is. So you know how there'd be two x-intercepts on a parabola? Um, I'm going to go back over here real quick. There are two of them. Um, you can also think, since it's an x-squared equation, a quadratic, that it's going to have um, two x-intercepts. Um, think about that. So 2x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. So then you can solve these two itty-bitty little equations. Um, I showed all my work. If you can solve it without showing all the work, um, that would be fine with me right now. So add 3 to both sides, and then you get 2x equals 3, 2 at times x, so the opposite of times is divide, so x would be 3 over 2. Over here, x plus 4 equals 0. Probably you can just know that that's negative 4, but I showed that you subtract 4. So your x-intercepts would be 3 over 2, 0, and negative 4, 0. This is a new step right here, splitting them and making them each equal to zero. This is the new part of today's lesson. Uh, tune in next for video number three.